And today I want to share the magical histories of unicorns by Russ Thorne with you. It is really pretty. It's got this lovely foil title that just makes the word unicorns a little magical. I found this at Barnes & Noble in the bargain department for $8. It was $7.98. It retails at $16, so it was a lot cheaper to get it as a bargain title. I filmed this back in May and waited to post it now during Magic Myth and Mischief. Since then, Russ Thorne has created a second book in the series entitled The Magic History of Mermaids, and I picked that up as well. You know I picked that one up because it's mermaids, and they're my everything. I'll pick up everything with mermaids. I picked that one up recently, and I'll be doing a video very soon of that as well, so hopefully by the end of the month you'll hear all about the magical history of mermaids, which I also got for the bargain price at Barnes & Noble. And this is the back cover with a beautiful unicorn, and it tells you a little bit about the book itself. When you open it up, these are the gorgeous end papers. You can see a unicorn. And this is a book I may not have thought twice about, except that I recently looked at the Fairy Handbook and the Mermaid Handbook by Carolyn Turgeon and the editors of Fairy Magazine. And I've done videos for both of them that I'll link to at the end of this video and I'll link to below because they are gorgeous and you need to see them too. And they had so much interesting information and they focused on lore that I may not have considered and I think that they're great writing references. And since I write in a fantasy world, there may be a time when I want to write about unicorns as well. So or even beings that lived alongside unicorns, so I really like that this is going to give me some of that information. And you have beautiful full color images and illustrations. This is your table of contents. You get myth and magic, faith and legend, real unicorns, medical marvels, war horse, artful creatures, bookish beasts, superstars of the screen, and then unicorns updated. So it starts off with a foreword, and there are just these gorgeous pictures. You've got an introduction, myths, just pictures after pictures. It's worth it for the pictures alone. Dolls. What a unicorn looks like. It's got quotes from books such as Terry Pratchett in Lords and Ladies. He says, I thought unicorns were more fluffy. And so you just get all of these quotes throughout from other books and from movies. Here's something from Peter S. Beagle's The Last Unicorn, which was turned into a movie. And just the art is so pretty. There's a whole section on myth and magic, so you can see some of the details that have been brought out of mythology. And again, I just love it for the art alone, let alone everything else. And I love seeing all of the quotes that have been pulled out. Look at that. The unicorn, she said, was a marvelous beast, shining with honor wisdom, and strength, just to see him strengthen the soul. You get myths from around the world, starting all the way back between 400 BC and 8300. The way unicorns are seen in Asia. The way unicorns can be traced all the way back to Gilgamesh, and that may be the first time they appeared. There's a section on faith and legend, and how people went from goats and dragons to white horses, and Christianity in the Middle Ages. More beautiful images, quotes from Shakespeare, the way unicorns are seen in Christianity and other religions, real unicorns, and the way they are perceived to be real in today's world, medical marvels, and the way it was believed unicorn horns could cure a lot of diseases, war horses and the temper of a unicorn, artful creatures, and the way people have been sharing pictures and sculptures since before time itself since before unicorns were even shown in the written form. When stories were told through tapestries that hung in great halls, myths that you can use in writing, such as the blood of the unicorn and how it may keep you alive. There may be a terrible price to it about unicorns being immortal and living alone. Bookish beasts and the way unicorns are seen in writing and in literature. Superstars of the screen and the way unicorns are presented in the movies. And of course, you can't have a section like this without talking about The Last Unicorn, which is a movie I loved as a child, thanks to shows like My Little Pony that I was obsessed with. It talks about Superman. It talks about Unico, which was an anime from Japan. It talks about Harry Potter and the unicorn blood needed for something pivotal that happens in that series. And it talks about the Tom Cruise movie Legend. It talks about the Neil Gaiman book turned into a movie Stardust. 
It even talks about the Brothers Grimm. Blade Runner, She-Ra. Unicorns have been in so many things and there are so many titles spotlighted in this section. And it really brought a smile to my face because I knew so many of them. And it even talks about unicorns today and the way they're even in music videos like things that Lady Gaga has done. And I just really loved going through this book and seeing all the lore, seeing all the quotes pulled out from books and movies, seeing the beautiful artwork that they chose to include. There's a section on things to read and to watch if you're into unicorns or looking to research them. And I think this book was very well put together. I think it's something that appeals to all ages, to kids, to teens, to adults. If you love unicorns, if you're researching them for writing, it is just such a great little resource. It's only $8. You can get it in the bargain section at Barnes & Noble. You can also get it at retail across the world for $15, 10 pounds in the UK. And it was just a really nice find and I am glad that I saw it and that I picked it up and it was definitely worth the price and I look forward to reading this in even more detail soon. That's everything from me today. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.